Well, Doug, here we are once again. It has been two months since we've done a talk time. Yeah, but you've done a lot of other things in the process of those two months. Hey, Jack and I haven't even been reading the books. But He's, you've been cooking. I've been cooking. And we've been eating. We have been eating, which is always a good thing because eating is fun. <laughs> not, a, not only necessary, but fun. Well, do you know a lot of life and enjoyment revolves around eating? Yep. Yeah. Everything you do. Every time you get together with people, you assume that there's going to be food involved. And do you know at uh, church, whenever food is involved, if there's like a meal afterwards or like a little talk thing where you have coffee and donuts or cookies, it seems like the attendance is up quite a bit higher. Especially if it's a uh, covered dish, oh, potluck, where yeah. you got a variety. That's always good. That's always good. It's been... Um, a stressful year, hasn't it? Yes. You could say that, yes. What was it's, it? In March it was COVID. It started. It's still going on. It's still COVID. It's still COVID. And of course people have been stressed about the elections for the last four years. <laughs> so that's still going on. Today is actually, what is it? The, I have my, yeah. Today's the 8th. The 8th. November the 8th. So it's five days after election day five days after election day and you know that stress and everything that was going on before election it's not going to just stop today you know it's not going to stop because the election is over it's not going to stop for quite a long time mm -hmm. it didn't stop for four years the last time and there's a good chance it won't stop for another the, the infighting years. might like, just keep on continuing right on through so. well the sad part about that is um, is that we forget that we are a country that we shouldn't be fighting against one another uh, even though all of us have different beliefs uh, so half of the nation is upset right now the other half is happy but the thing is we have to remember that if you're the unhappy one not to make life miserable for all the happy ones and if you're the happy one don't gloat don't say I, you know i told you so put it you know you, you have to watch how you behave this is true and it uh, seems like it gets a little bit worse every election cycle i i can't when, remember one as bad as this when donald trump got uh, elected four years ago it really seemed to upset the apple cart <laughs> And uh, well, I, I mean, not that I'm uh, not that I'm against Donald Trump, but he does tend to like to instigate. Oh, we'll get off that we're subject. Not, not, yeah, we'll, no, but no, but I mean, uh, there's ways to unite, and there's ways to divide. Well, there is, but also there was people who downright hated him and attacked him oh sure and would not support anything that he would do so there was always opposition always uh, to to his presidency from from day one so do you think that maybe people will remember how that felt that now that biden is in office that maybe if you weren't a fan of his that you could at least not hate him and try to be a citizen of the United States. Well, I think you need to look beyond the political yes. boundaries, the political realm. Um, as Christians, we are commanded to pray for everybody, but also pray for the president, pray yeah, for our the leaders. leaders. Yeah. Uh, it's not a matter of hatred. No. We should not hate him. I might not like his policy, uh, what he stands for, but that doesn't mean that I should always oppose him. No. Or uh, the goal would be to root for the leaders that they could unite the United States. Um, yeah, it's it's. I don't know if you were going to bring it up earlier, but we were just singing the song "United We Stand, Divided We Fall." Yeah. Uh, uh, and we've been a nation divided, and uh, you can kind of see the status and the state of our political world. Well, this here, that song is actually for a couple singing. You know, that would be like as if we sang this song. But it goes for any relationship. 
Uh, that song, it says, There's nowhere in the world that I would rather be than with you, my love. Uh, and there's nothing in the world that I would rather see than your smile, my love. For united we stand, divided we fall, and if our backs should ever be up against the wall, we'll be together, together you and I. And it says on down here, of course, they repeat that uh, refrain. Then it says, then I'll still be here, and if the going gets too hard along the way, just you call and I'll hear. And then, of course, they go back into the chorus. Right. But the, the point is, in a marriage, if you are not united and you are always at each other and divided, it won't last. Mm -hmm. it, it will fall apart. Won't work. And I remember that from history class as far as our political uh, realm in our country. Uh, a nation divided cannot stand. You will eventually fall apart. Yes. Uh, if you are united, you may, you may look at things differently and have different thoughts and ideology and, and so forth, but you still need to be re united. You still need to be able to work together. Yeah, and the, the problem is that a lot of us, and, and we're all tempted to be this way, uh, we tend to say, okay, this is my opinion. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I'm not even going to open my mind up to listen to anything that you have to say. And that's just not in politics. We see that in everything in life. Uh, it's either people will have it, it's either black and white. Do it my way or no way. That's it. Can't do it. Can't listen to you. Not gonna, you know, not even going to just say, hey, let me just think for a minute. If 50% of the nation is Democratic and 50% voted Republican, both sides have to have had something good to make people like it. To see, so there has to be a give and take somewhere. It's not that the Democrats can't be all bad. The Republicans can't be all bad. What's bad is when we belittle people and make them feel guilty for being one party or the other instead of saying, hey, we're all part of the United States. Well, that's not how society is looking at things as a whole right now. Uh, no, it's uh, really it's really. I, I, mean, I, I shouldn't say that. There, there's probably a lot of people that do that. But what we see in the news and hear in the news, we hear that, that element of society that it's just um, spewing hatred and will not listen to the other side. Or Well, I think the media is a big problem of, of what's going on because the media likes to have new, anything newsworthy is going to be people at each, throat, each other's throats because that draws their ratings higher. Well, we could talk all night about that kind of stuff. Um, but it's it's going to happen yeah. because people are going to be talking about it. But uh, the COVID has stressed people out. Then you have the election. Around here, winter is on its way. So even though today it was like 78 degrees. It was beautiful up today. <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, but the thought of winter, and winter always reminds me of death. <laughs> No, it's the death of everything green, of uh, plant life. Everything dies. Tree leaves fall off trees. When you drive out on a cold winter day, it's as if the planet has died. And thankfully, we still get the sun. But the sun decides to go down like at 4.30 at night. Yeah. <laughs> I don't enjoy winter like I used to. Uh, seems like every year we look forward to it less and less well we could still say uh, we'll talk about some things here and how you look at a situation so how we look at winter how we look at the election how we look at covid how we look at isolation that has been going on how we look at all of this can make a difference in how we feel how we think how healthy we are and you have come up with some notes talking about that, I bet you. Well, uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about is a lot of the ugliness comes from the news media, but also social media. And um, there are some people who talk about how that affected them. 
Uh, and uh, it's sad to say, but there will be some people who are watching us right now who have an agenda and who are waiting for us just to say the wrong thing so that they can attack. And you can see that on the social media too. If you post anything, there's always going to be a negative instead of the positive. In social media, you can never, it's not like having a face-to-face -face conversation. No. Uh, people are no. a little more uh, emboldened to speak their mind because they're not talking face-to-face. -face. No, it's easy to type. But Plus, you... you also cannot truly understand the context of what the person making the post was, was expressing themselves. So, I think a lot of times it's taken out of context and people respond in a negative way when really there wasn't anything to really respond to in that, in, that, in that way. Well, I know it's sometimes you can read something and normally if you were talking to someone face to face, you wouldn't be as hateful. Uh, normally if you would just stop for a moment when you read one of those posts, take a deep breath, maybe count <laughs> to 10 and just try to remember to filter what you say so that you don't regret it later. And that's what we find a lot of people. And there's people we're gonna be hearing about that have lost relationships, friends, family members, family members yeah. all over this election and the division and hatred. Yeah. And isn't that sad? When you get down to losing siblings and family members, that's... That's a sad that, thing. That's a sad state of affairs, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So the article, uh, some of the articles that I have, they're secular. They're not Christian-based articles. But when I was looking over this, I could see the fingerprint of God all through these articles because he is the creator of the mind and the body. And how we respond to him makes all the difference in the world. God is associated with light, goodness, and kindness. And we, as human beings, whether you're Christian or not, we are designed to live in that light. We know the difference. We all have that knowing from birth, the difference between good and evil. But it's what we feed the most. So when we don't live in God's light, when we don't show goodness, kindness, and love to one another, we are living in that darkness, and we are living in death. We are living in fear. And, and even though these are secular things here, well, there, there's a thought. Uh, whatever, we are slaves to whatever consumes our mind. That's right. I have always liked that, that saying. We are slaves to whatever consumes your mind. So if negativity is consuming your thoughts, your mind, you're a slave to that. What is going to come out is going to be negative. That's so. right. That's right. And, and that's why it's so important to remember what to fill your mind with. Are we going to fill it with light or are we going to fill it with darkness? And the comments you see on social media lets people know, are you in the light or are you in the darkness right now? And we hope that everyone is able to come to the light and not be so stressed out. And here's just some things. It says, Americans are stressed out by their presidential elections. These are some questions that will help you check to see in with yourself to see how you're doing. And for Americans facing the COVID lockdown and economic instability through the spring and summer, that became a difficult question and to answer to ask and to answer. Things were already pretty bad and then the presidential election began. So it says a new survey from the American Psychological Association finds this election is a significant source of stress for more than two-thirds of Americans. And that was up from half back in 2016. So that's about 66% of the population is really, really stressed out over this. The other third, not so much. Well, I think people were tuned in uh, to this election. Plus, I think also the media drove that a lot. Oh, they, Whether yeah. you listen to uh, conservative or liberal media, each one drives their point of view. So. Um, oh yeah, and I tell you what. It, it kind of keeps everything stirred up. Well, it's almost like a brainwashing because if I hear Fox News, 
you hear one way. I was listening to another news channel, which is describing the other way. But the important thing would be to maybe listen to both and get some different points of view so you can kind of make some educated decision about... Well, here again, and not to get on the, the media thing, but I wish they would just tell you the news. That and would let, be And great. let you decipher and decide how you feel about it. That would um, be wonderful. Just tell they, me the news. I they don't, don't do that anymore. Right. They, they want to tell you how you should feel about whatever, and they... they they give you the narrative and to whatever, but let's get down the rabbit trail. Well, I like to go down that trail. <laughs> no. It says about 7 in 10 Americans are worried about the risk of widespread violence breaking out across the country after the results of the election. Now, this would have been written a few days before the election, but I have not been watching the news. Has there been violence yet? I haven't truly been watching it either. Uh, since the election, I pretty much have shut it off. It, it was there again. It was, it was just too so, negative. Yeah. Just so negative, it was even hard to listen to. Um, I don't think there's been, well, I, I can't say that for sure. I don't think to the degree where there has been violence before the election for the last three months in different cities. Yeah. And it says a lot of people are feeling scared and helpless. And, uh, and for a lot of people, this is a traumatic event. To me, I would fall in the one-third of the category. I'm more of a neutral type person. I don't get all revved up into one candidate or the other. Um, I've always been that way because I'm not much into politics, and I just can't stand to listen to it. But <coughs> I'm under the impression that, hey, it's, it's all going to be okay. I may be naive, but... Still gonna wake up tomorrow, uh, uh, Doug? You're like that. They're like, yeah. But I'll just bite my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I just it doesn't keep me awake at night. I don't think about it normally during the day. Uh, it just does not. It has never consumed my thoughts. I don't. I'm not a big fan of either candidate, uh, but they're both human beings, and I think. They should be treated as, as such, both. Not just one, not the other, but both. We should remember they are human beings, even it doesn't matter what they behave like, they're human beings. Yeah, they are. And they're, they're leaders. So, do you have something to say no, about that? I can bite my tongue. I can bite your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We're, we're not here to talk about our political affiliations. And oh, stuff. I know. So, well, it's, it's, it's fun, though. I think it's fun just to have a little bit. We're not saying who we're for or against, but the point is we don't need to be against. Well, there again, it's, it's, you cannot attack the person personally, but you can disagree with their policies. That's right. Uh, a few people that I talked to that did not like Trump, didn't like wasn't going to vote for him because I didn't like the man. Well, yeah, he, he's not that easy to like, but he, he is, you should be voting for the party, the Republican well, well, or the Democrat. Well, but if you, again, don't want to get down the trail, but if you look at all the good things that happened in his presidency, regardless whether you liked him or not, um, I think he accomplished quite a bit. So not to vote for somebody, whether it's Democrat or Republican, because you don't like them, um, I don't think it was the right way to look at it. No. You have to look at the policy, what they're going to do, how they are going to affect the country. Uh, so. Well, that would have been the great thing if we could have just heard that. If we could have just heard each person say, hey, this is what I plan to do, uh, and not badger each other. This is, this is what I plan to do. This is our policy. Or if somebody would actually on the news media say, this is the pros, this is the con. Well, they can't really do that without their opinion. Just state what they're going to do or what each party represents so <coughs> people could make a decision. Well, you can do that on your own. It takes a little bit of work to research that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm too lazy. Probably most of us are. Yes, <laughs> too lazy. So, but some of the things it says, what's happening in my body and my mind? Uh, sometimes our feelings sneak up on us and our body can experience emotions before our conscious mind is even aware of them. Uh, it says the body is a big place with a lot going on inside. 
So you might break your inquiry down even to more. Is this election disrupting my sleep? You might not even know you're upset about the election too much until you your physical body starts to... I haven't been that upset about it, disappointed for sure, but I know there's people out there that um, Are you losing ha sleep? have probably... Uh, right on the edge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, with with everything, and um, and that's a sad place to be. Yes, it is. Because that's a terrible feeling. Because of, of, of that anxiety and that uh, depression and everything. Well, there's a lot of people too that have been emotionally, politically, and all that invested in all this. I mean, that really follow it and yeah, uh, yes, so forth. So. It says, is it interfering with my ability to concentrate? These are ways to gauge yourself to see if maybe this is, a, if you are a slave to this, is this consuming my every thought? And sometimes we can't control the things that consume our thoughts. Uh, we almost have to walk away from it and shut that off. And uh, we're going to tell you a few things you can do to, to maybe change the way you think. And then, do I feel breathless or feel pressure in my chest? Anyone who's suffered from anxiety knows that you will get that breathless. A lot of times you'll be sitting there and you'll catch yourself going, it's almost like you can't catch your breath. You have that tightness in your chest. It feels like you're going to suffocate. And if you're feeling that way, there's some things you're going to have to do to try to calm your body down but it won't happen overnight you can't do it without some conscious thought yeah yeah so uh, some of these things are repetitive that would be do you find yourself thinking of the election even when you would rather be thinking about other things and that happens not only with the election that happens anytime you've been under a lot of stress or no, pressure. Yeah, no matter what it is, no whatever what is it consuming is. you at the time. Yeah, it's it's thoughts that you can't control. <coughs> uh, a, a lot of people, when they're stressed and been stressed for a long time, they can have negative thoughts that they don't want to think about, that they can't control, but they come, they're called intrusive thoughts. And a lot of us who have had stress or anxiety, there's ways to calm that down, get rid of those. And, and start moving forward. I have some here. Oh, are you getting enough good news? In the midst of all this negativity, are you finding things that you can, uh, can you get good news? Are there things you can do to see what the good is happening in the world? There are good people out there. Oh, definitely. I've had to change the radio station instead of listening to news, talk shows, so forth. Turn that off and move to something else. But, well, comedies would be a good thing. I either listen to the Prey Station or Comic Channel. There you go. Need a few laughs or you need some inspiration. Um, Laughing always turn, helps. Turn the news off and. Yep. Because some people I know their butts planted on a chair and they're watching that news 24 7. Well, you can watch the news for 10 minutes in the morning. That pretty much <laughs> takes care of the day because they repeat everything. Oh, goodness. Uh, it also says. When do I feel good about the election? Uh, he, he says, yeah, find out that there are good people out there, but set your goals. What can I do to make this world a better place? Even if the candidate of your choice did not make it, guess what? You can still do good in the world. Do we have goals? Do we set goals? If something makes you mad about what's going on in the country, what are you going to do about it? You're going to sit back and complain about it? Or are you going to get up and do something about it? Good thought. Yeah. Well, a lot of times we, we all do that. We complain, ah, blah, 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 blah. But we don't do a darn thing about it. I think a lot of people in the political realm think, what can I do about it? Yeah. Which, when you're talking about politically, voting is our right. That's the one voice we have. But it's pretty hard to... In my opinion, it's pretty hard to make a change by yourself, you know. No, but you can make changes in your own little area. And we'll talk about that yeah, in a little bit. Yeah, so uh, also when you find good news, then let yourself feel good about it. They also say about moral elevation. Well, one thing, this is, uh, 
you know, talking about moral elevation. That's the warm feeling we get when we witness someone engaging in courageous acts. Uh, someone who goes out of their way to do good for someone, someone else. else. And there again, this is in, this is not, this is just secular. This, but isn't this what the Bible calls us to do? Well, it, it comes in line with that, yeah. Yes, it does. So moral elevation. Whenever we see people do good, it makes us feel good. Whenever we do good, it makes us feel sure. good. So th we have to remember that, uh, that that is the thing, is when we are seeing goodness, kindness, we're always rooting for the underdog in a movie. Don't you always root for the good guy? <laughs> you never want that bad guy to win. In the end, you're like hooting and hollering if, if the good guy prevails. That's, that's just elevating us to that higher level. You're making fun of me. Doug's having a fun time here. He's just making fun of me. You go, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. But you're going you're gonna to be talking here shortly. And here is a big, big thing. What am I grateful for today? What am I grateful for? Well, that goes to the question, is the glass half full or half empty? Are we a pessimist or are we an optimist? And it's easy to be the pessimist, especially when things seem to be so negative around you yeah. all the time. It's, it's easy to be negative. It's easy to be the, the pessimist. So we have to, a lot of times consciously, look for the positive. Look for the good. Look for the good. Yeah. Because you're not going to find it on the news very seldom do you hear the good things. What well, says here, in the face of demoralization, gratitude has the power to energize. In the face of brokenness, gratitude has the power to heal. In the face of despair, gratitude has the power to bring hope. When we focus on what we're thankful for, we're more resilient when times are tough. If we turn toward appreciating the good in our lives, it lessens our anxiety and depression so we can stay calmer in the face of uncertainty and it can keep us from burning out. Gratitude is also a premier social emotion that binds us to other people, strengthening our relationships Cultivating it in ourselves inspires us to help others in need, even when giving help is costly to us, something that we could use in these difficult times when we need to come together. And there's a lot of that out there. There are people there, who... There's a lot of good things being done. There's a lot of good people that do good things. And, and random things. Random things. Uh, we just don't hear about it. Yeah, you, you just don't see that. It's not publicized. Sometimes you hear the stories, but... We don't want to sound so negative either. There's a lot of good people out there, there that are doing many amazing things for other people. So what you can ask yourself every morning when you get up or when before you go to bed or during the day when things seem to be so overwhelming that you just can't take it, what can I be thankful for? You can say, God, help me see what good there is. Help me see what's out there that I need to be thankful for because I can't see it right now because I'm so stressed and those thoughts are just bombarding me, those negative thoughts. Help me, Lord, get rid of these and help me focus on the good. The best way to do that is to go out and do good. So, Doug, you can interject anytime. You're doing fine. I'm good with nodding and saying yes, that's fine. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Well, it also says here, find purpose. What are you good at? What are some things you can do? Uh, purpose, the drive to make a difference in the world, is intimately related to meaning. A sense that's what's happening to you and around you matters in some way. So, it says here there was a study done of students, college students, midterm, that... Uh, their sense of meaning did decline if their candidate lost, but amazing to this, college students, it rebounded within about a week after the election. <laughs> okay, let's back, go on. Back to life. Hey, well, that's the fantastic thing about youth. <laughs> yeah. They're resilient. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> they, they can just go on. You know, when you're younger, you're not as opinionated. 
Well, we weren't, I don't think. Well, I think there's just so much more in life when you're young. Um, you have so many things to going look on. You're looking to. forward to a good time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so yeah, you might be down a little bit about something like this, but, but there hey, you go. Life, your life goes on. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if we could all be like that? Okay, yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so it's just talking about different things here. Um, <clears throat> this I thought was great. It talks about if you had a magic wand and, and you had a wish of what you would like to see happen in the world, whether it be people being kinder, or what you would like to change, what would you like to root for that could change in this world that you're not seeing that's there today. But it says we don't have a magic wand and we don't know what will happen on November 3rd, but we do know that there will be a November 4th. And we know that we are all going to have to get out of bed and do what we can to make this world a better place. No matter who is in the White House, we might feel powerless, but we're not. We can vote, we can donate money in March, and we can help the people whose lives we touch. And maybe four years from now, when we ask our neighbor or a co-worker or a friend how they're doing, they'll be able to say, great. Wouldn't that be great? It would be. And that is finding purpose, that is trying to figure out, engage yourself of how stressed you really are. But there's plenty of things you can do here. Uh, you can be grateful. It says here to stay calm. You can try to react positively. Learn to accept things. Um, go outside. Enjoy nature. Meditate. And I love this one, be the warrior. Face your problems like that of a warrior. Instead of running from them, having the strength to deal with whatever is happening in your life brings, bless you, brings more confidence. It's times like these where you can test your true strength and grow if you take the opportunity to do so with open arms and a warrior mind. Know that the problems will eventually cease, probably a lot more quickly if you manage them. Running away may cause the problem to resurface from time to time. Be a warrior. Uh, put on the armor of God. That's the picture of being a warrior, isn't it? Uh, this is my mother calling. Okay. I better take it. I better take it. Hello. All right. I love you, Mom. Good night. Bye bye. Okay. So if we put on the armor of God, we can be that warrior and see that everything will be fine if we remember who's in control. That's it. Do we remember that? I think right now, even a lot of Christians uh, have been focused more so on the world instead of keeping the focus on uh, our, our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we do that, we, we start down that path of negativity and yeah. uh, resentment and hatred and so forth. So we need to keep that focus in line and where our true strength comes from is is our Savior Jesus. And you know what there's a lot of Christians and uh, we all are tempted to state our opinion but as Christians we are held to a higher standard and we need to watch how we behave in public we need to watch what we say in public and uh, this well even even on social media it, well that's it, what I mean it's yeah. very easy to uh, spout off pretty quickly without really like you say putting your thoughts and your words through a filter but um, we are held to a higher standard and we should be the light when there is the darkness that's right this guy here he said he deleted the Facebook app off his phone turned off Instagram notifications hoping to shield himself from the latest viral political meme you know those memes that they have out there and temptation to engage in another social argument for the past year friends argued with friends while others simply stopped talking to each other family members with opposing views tuned out their relatives Consumed with the daily drama, both sides lived in separate social media and television bubbles that steered dramatically different outlooks on the race. So people are losing friends, they're losing family members, 
They're losing co-workers. There's fighting. I've had people send me private messages. Tanya, please pray for me. Pray for the people at my job. We're not getting along. Uh, this election is tearing us apart. Isn't that sad? That is sad. So, uh, of course, you want... People have the right to have their opinion, but when it causes so much strife and fighting and just just downright mean, people are downright mean. How do we get back to this, Doug? How do we get back to the Bible? How do we get to where we can relax and calm ourselves down? <clears throat> well, it's a matter of, uh, there again, what you focus on. What is consuming your mind? Where, where do you allow your mind to go? What are you a slave to? Uh, many of us have been a slave to COVID, a slave to fear, a uh, slave to the election, fear of what's going to happen after the, the election, no matter who won, somebody's going to be upset, upset and sure. fearful and, and so forth. And if that is consuming your mind, then uh, that's what you're a slave to. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible talks about renewing your mind. Yes. And we are to renew our minds all the time. And the question is how you do that. Uh, big thing is prayer. Communication. Yeah. Um, in any relationship, if you put it in human terms, and you just mentioned it the other day, uh, when you don't talk to certain people for any length of time, you don't talk to friends, you tend to drift apart. That's there right. becomes distance between you. You're not as close. You're not communicating. You don't know what's going on with them. They don't know what's going on with you. And it's really the same thing with Jesus Christ. If, if we're not communicating with Him through prayer, through worship, um, quiet time, then we're, we're distant from Him. And yeah. What He has the offer, to offer, we're not, we're not receiving. So you can renew your mind through prayer. You renew your mind through reading the Scripture. Uh, mm -hmm. Pick out a Scripture to a day and read it. Um, worship. And you don't have to go to church to worship. You don't have to be in any certain setting. I like to listen to music in, in the truck when I drive. That's worship. Just being with Him. A um, couple of big ones. Confession and repentance. Oh, yeah. Um, you cannot have a strong relationship with anybody if you don't admit your mistakes. Mm -hmm. You don't communicate those mistakes and then ask for forgiveness. Uh, same way with Jesus Christ. You have to confess and you have to repent of things that you do. And I think one of the biggest ones is obedience. Obedience to the fact that we should live a life pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. Not live a life pleasing to society or social media or whatever the case may be. That's where our focus comes where we want to please the world instead of pleasing God. So being obedient to what God tells us and how we should live our life. Live a life pleasing to Him. But also be obedient to the commission that Jesus talks about, uh, that He gives us, and that is to go out, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to love one another. Mm -hmm. And I think we're failing at that pretty miserably right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I know we all fall short of that. Uh... And the gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of forgiveness, a gospel of repentance, a gospel of reconciliation, a gospel of love, uh, a gospel of doing unto others uh, the goodness and the kindness that you would prefer to have done unto you. And it's a gospel that is totally opposite of what we have been seeing. Exactly. So we made not be able to do anything politically. Uh, what can one person do in the political realm to change things? But one person can pray. Mm -hmm. One person can be the light for somebody else who's down. Somebody who is experiencing all those things. We can be maybe a life-changing force for that person. We can be a lifeline for that person. We can person. be an example mm -hmm. the way we live our lives as people look at us and we seem to 
be happy or whatever the case may be. Uh, I want what you want or I want what you have. Uh, we can be that example for others. Uh, we can be the light in the darkness when we introduce them to Jesus Christ. And we can. And we can show them that you can have calm in the midst of the storm. Uh, even though that's hard to do, if your focus remains on Jesus through this whole time, even though you're worried about the state of things going on, you're worried about what does the future hold? How does that change the future? How does this future affect me? If we put our trust and faith in Jesus during that storm, we can come through the other side and look back and see where he walked with us, where he led us, where he guided us. And we can see that our focus and our trust should not be put in man. It should not be put in one party or the other. That our trust has to be put into God's hands. You know, it boils down to exactly that. Uh, God is in control. Yeah, we thought this election was going to go a, a, a different way. But God is still in control. He's still in control, uh, yeah. We really do not know what his plan is. Mm -hmm. um, it was easy for me on Wednesday when the news came out that Biden was probably going to win. I, that was difficult. A lot of prayers were going up uh, for our country and, and so forth. How could God let this go that direction? It's easy for people to think that. But we don't know what God's plan is. No. This might be four years that things come together. We don't know. God's in control. And apparently Mr. Biden is a Christian man. He is. I don't know enough about him on that level to say that. So I, I, I do believe know. he is. I believe, if I've seen him, that he is a, a Catholic. I'm almost positive. I'll have to look that up. But he I is a Christian. I think he's Catholic as far as practicing Catholic I, I don't know I don't know where he is on, on the Christian personal level so but I can't speak to that I who knows who knows what God can do with him who knows what changes he may make that that God can guide him and direct him and he can That's this a, might be the best four years yet we don't know yeah and I don't think it's uh, real healthy for us to speculate uh, what all we can say is, God, you're in control, yeah. and I'm going to try to do what you want me to do and be obedient to your word. And, uh, Father, when I feel uh, an urging to help someone or to talk to someone, that I have the strength to do that. Um, Just looking up here a minute. I yeah, would. he's a Catholic faith. Yeah. Yeah, God can speak to him. God can use well, him. God God can do anything. Uh, yep. Like I said, there's... there's it's hard to tell where this is going to go and where uh, God's going to take us. And one lady said at church this morning, I can't wait to see what he does. Isn't that exciting? And that's the way we need to be looking yeah. at it. Uh, God, what do you have in store? Yeah, what, what, what are you, you going to do? do? And be upbeat about that in your faith in God that God's in control and we're just going to follow his lead. So we should be excited to see what God's going to do. One way or the other. There was something I wrote down here that reminded me of Romans 8.28. I was trying to look for that here. <coughs> Let me see. God works for the good in all things. In all things. All things. All things. No matter whether you're happy or sad about how the election turned out, God works. He can take that and turn it into good. <coughs> this one here, let's see. It's hard for us to fathom that, but in the darkest points of our life, God is still working for our good. He is still there. There again, what do we focus on? What consumes our mind at that point? Yeah, and 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 yeah, God's God's still at work. He's going to take care of things. All we have to do is put our trust in Him. Even though I said all we have to do, it's not that simple. <laughs> this is what we need to do: is to start trusting Him more. Maybe to stay in focused uh, in the Word. Well, all those things that you talk about, I think, are, are good things. You've dealt with anxiety. Yeah. You know what that's like, and you have done a lot of those things to, yeah. to, to bring you through those times when you uh, have that anxiety feeling. And I think they're all good things to do and to learn and to know. Uh, but I would also tell you to put your trust in the Lord. If you don't know the Lord... Um, 
What? Come see you. And, and, <laughs> and answer that <laughs> knock on your heart. You know, if, if you're if you feel that tug on your heart to get to know the Lord, seek Him out. Um, seek someone out to to talk to. Uh, whether that's somebody at a church, somebody you know. Uh, yeah, and there's people out there that you know that they have total trust in God because they are the people you want to hang out with. They are the people that just have light just beaming out of them. There's some people out there you just know. Yeah. You just know. And uh, it says here too, uh, important things to do is to exercise regularly, get adequate sleep, uh, build a mindful practice, uh, keep a gratitude journal. There again, what are you grateful for? <coughs> gratitude. Create safe havens. Um, you can uh, create a place where you can go to a room by yourself. Some people might call that a, a prayer closet. Yeah, a prayer, prayer closet uh, or a room. Uh, maybe a place where you just feel safe and calm. Uh, identify relationships, people that you feel safe around. Uh, people that will lift you up. That way that can help with stress. Empathy. Have empathy for others. Uh, we forget that. Everyone has a story, even the people who hurt us, empathizing with the complexity of their lives. We forget that everybody doesn't have the same life we had. Well, we're pretty judging. We are judging. We are judging. Uh, perspective. Uh, put things into perspective. Um, and choose what you focus on. And, and there again, all of that can help you with stress. And that breathing technique, remember to breathe. Just breathe. Take time out to take deep breaths and remember to breathe uh, because it is so hard not to. And, and, and speaking of perspective, you know, uh, with even COVID, there's so much division on that. But your your perspective changes when it affects you. It When it hits closer to home. When it hits closer to home. What can change or may change, yes. Yeah, so... Even all of that, your, your perspective on everything changes when you have been affected by it. And, and we have to remember that people are being affected on both sides of this, of both sides of COVID, of both sides of the election. People have their own story. They have their own struggles. And we can't understand what somebody else's struggle may be. And instead of being judging and making fun and, and belittling, uh, you know, we've had people say, uh, I've seen somebody say that if you can't be a Christian if you had voted Democrat. What type of language, what type of talk is that? What type of love is that? What type of, what is that? What is that? What is that, folks? If you're telling people that they can't be a Christian if they do this or they do that, because a Christian has nothing to do with that. A Christian has to do with thanking Jesus for the sacrifice he has made. Thanking Jesus that we aren't in any way, shape, or form good enough. But he's already paid the price. And the closer we stay to him, the better we become. But there's just been so much ugliness out there. It makes everybody just want to go crawl in a hole somewhere. <laughs> just... <laughs> not come back out and well that's let's the way it's been just change your focus yes okay change, i'm going to wipe that off yeah, now change, start change, your, new. change your focus focus on positive things and uh focus on god good did you have anything else you'd want to say should i do it should i end on a happier note than what i just did probably <laughs> I didn't mean to get so far out there. We were talking about being positive. <laughs> I just kind of went off. Well, you know what, though? Sometimes, maybe not get all your emotions out on Facebook, but just get it out before you get on Facebook. Or, you know, there's so many things. But There was a scripture that... Uh... Well, you talked on your uh, the sermon you have coming up. Is there anything that is in that that relates to this? Well, I talked about the obedience thing and renewing your mind uh, and, and basically being obedient to what God gives us we are supposed to be spreading. We talked about the gospel, but... Uh, 
wasn't that your thing on the parable of the talents the though? Talent, yeah. So working with what God gave us pretty much. Don't hide, don't cover up and hide it like the one guy did, what the well, one guy didn't. Um, yeah, the two of them took what was given to them and used their abilities to go multiplied. out and they multiplied it, they bared fruit. Uh, the, the last guy um, was kind of selfish. He didn't want to go out and do anything. He buried it and he was able to give that one bag back, but he didn't do anything with what was given to him. Uh, he didn't bear any fruit. Uh, one point that I got out of that was the, the master gave bags of gold, or depending on what Bobby you're reading, but what does Jesus have that's valuable that he gives us to use? Well, what do you mean? I'm, I'm not following the question. Wait a minute. If the master gave those servants money, value, something valuable, his possessions for them to take and be stewards of and multiply it and bear fruit with it. What does our master, Jesus Christ, what does he give us? Love. He gives us, yeah, I mean there's a lot of things he gives us, but I think he gives us God's grace. Okay. He, he, which encompasses love, forgiveness, kindness, all those good things. He gives us uh, the gift of relationship. He gives us salvation. All that stuff is what we are given as servants. And we are supposed to take that and bear fruit with it. Mm -hmm. Not keep it like the third servant did. Right. We are supposed to Not go out. Not hoard it all to ourselves. We are supposed to go out and use it, build on it, give it away, multiply it, bear fruit for our master. So, Are we doing that? Are we bearing that fruit? And that's a choice we have to make each and every day. Yeah. Lord, give me the strength to bear some fruit today. What, what, are, what are we working for? What's our goal? Yes, we have jobs. We have to work. We have to survive and make money to live in this world. But truly, what is our purpose and what is our goal? Mm -hmm. Are we truly working for God, taking what He has given us, what we enjoy, uh, what has changed our life? Are we bearing fruit? Are we working with that, mm -hmm. building it, multiplying it, or are we just kind of hoarding it to ourselves and being lazy with it? Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> some days, well, like, yeah, I some mean, days I feel like the lazy. It's a hard question, you know. Those, <laughs> those people, or those two servants who took what was given to them and they were good stewards, they were responsible, they went and did what they were supposed to do. God or the master said well done good and faithful servant that's what we want to hear him say well done good and faithful servant you know one day Jesus is going to come back but you hear of all the doom and gloom of all the stuff that's going on but I don't think he's going to come back till we all spread that good news and that uh, that everybody will have that ability to be his light and to bear fruit well, our minister this morning talked about that very thing. Did it, he? Yes, and you have to well, I recorded it, so you'll have to listen to it. And there's a couple of things that I wanted to, I was going to jot them down, and I didn't have anything to write with when I was sitting there in church this morning. There was one place he talked about that. Yeah, I think, I think uh, so, it's up to uh, us to, to get this world ready for Jesus' return. If you look at Matthew 24, Jesus is talking about things well that will be happening in the world before he returns. Okay, yeah. There's eight or nine different things that we will see happening within the world. But they're all negative. Very, very mm -hmm. harsh things, except for a couple things. Uh, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So amidst all the darkness that's going to be happening, there's still going to be people preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. And according to Jesus, it's going to be everywhere. Yes. So I know we can get into this conversation, but I think people before Jesus comes will have a chance to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. And they will have the opportunity to say, yes, I'm going to follow it. Yes, I believe it. Or I don't. Uh, and there was one other thing, too, that I uh, thought there was a couple things where that were going to be positive things amidst all the darkness. But 
Well, I think that uh, people who hear the true gospel will receive it. I think in this world today, there's a lot of false gospel. Well, it, it talks about that. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of, of false, false gospel. But um, uh, people who hear and they feel the true gospel, when they know that there is true love out there and that that love comes from Jesus Christ, those people, it's almost going to be too irresistible to turn down when you actually have seen the true love that comes well, from we, Jesus Christ. We need to be that true love. We need to people. be that true love, and, and that's where we fall short. Yeah. And here's here's a um, scripture I was thinking of earlier when we see all the the hatred we have in mm -hmm. the world today. Matthew twenty four twelve, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Yes. And that's again Jesus talking before he comes and what the condition of the world is going to be. Hatred, wickedness, and we're going to see love just yeah. disappear. But right after that, he says, hey, but we're going to spread the gospel throughout <laughs> all the right. land. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so. Yep. I think it's all going to be okay, folks. I know I can't speak for everyone, but uh, I do know that uh, it's all in what we focus on. We can not want to get out of bed in the morning, but... We have to have hope, we have to have a reason to get out of bed, and that reason can be our purpose, and that is to do good, be good, and to spread love to others. And well, I, I definitely am concerned for the country and which direction our new president will take us. I don't agree with his policies, um, but I'm not going to focus on him. I'm going to focus on what God wants me to do. And um, the world will be what it is. I can't change it. Nope. Uh, I can speak against it, pray against it, and all that sort of thing. But my goal is to listen to what God wants me to do. Very good. Very good. That's my sanity. That's his sanity. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my sanity, I don't know. See, I'm not too concerned. Am I being stupid, Doug? I'm just not concerned. I, well, I, don't... I think what you're what Rush Limbaugh would call a low information voter. I, I know, that's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad, but I am a low information voter. And, and I, you said about the Christian thing with the voting Democrat. Um, I think it's important for Christians to definitely know the policies of both parties. Yeah. Uh, there are certain things that government does that goes against the Word of God. And that should be a concern for the voting Christian. So I, I think we do need to be educated in what each party stands for. Yeah, and there again, we're talking the are. party because uh, yeah, you I, can't I, talk about the person because other people then exactly, would say, cannot, well, Donald Trump you, does not promote his personality, they would say, is not you, very Christian. You that not look at the at person. The man. Let's because look at what the, what the party, party the, says. And party and the policy. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's that's what you need to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there again, I'm still okay. I'm gonna go to work tomorrow, and it's not gonna keep me awake tonight. I'm gonna sleep fine. Um, Tomorrow's a new day. Yep. And it's supposed to be in the 70s again tomorrow. So let's wake up tomorrow and say, okay, God, let's see what you have to do. What do you have in store for us today? That's what? Good. Yep, that'll be great. That'll be good. Will you close with a word of prayer? Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity this morning to go to church. And Father, we do pray for our nation. We pray that no matter who's in the White House, that we can find unity. And we can come together. And we can focus on you and the commission that Jesus gave us is to go out and uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, but to love each other. And Father, we need to do that so we can be united. And help us wake up every day and just ask you, Lord, what do you have in store today? Help us to look for the positive and look to God and uh, anticipate what he may be doing and what he will be doing each day. And we know that he is in control let that be our focus. And Father, we just thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, uh, who opened the doorway to you that we can receive your grace, that we can have forgiveness and kindness and gentleness and mercy. Help us to be the light, Father. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Tomorrow we're going to be, we're going to anticipate. We're going to anticipate. We're going to be the light. Okay. <laughs> well, we can, well, you a lot of the times you are the light. Aw, that's so sweet of you to say. Well, I'm not just saying that because you bring a smile to somebody's face. That's A smile the can light. be the, a light, yes.